Hello, I'm James Patterson and I'm going to show you some of the most interesting new features in Photoshop CS6 Beta, which is available as a free download from the Adobe website. Now I'm sure the first thing you'll notice is the new darker interface, which brings Photoshop more in line with Adobe's other imaging software, Lightroom and Elements. And while it is only cosmetic, I think it's quite a dramatic change and it does take a little bit of getting used to, but I think after a few days, it, it begins to settle in. But if you find that you really can't live with it, then you can go to Edit, Preferences, and Interface, and you can choose from the classic gray and also a couple of different tones as well. Now let's take a look at the Layers panel over here because I want to show you a new feature that I think a lot of people will find very useful, particularly if you're used to working on documents with lots of layers like our Cyborg here. You can now filter those layers in different ways by using the drop down menu here and these options along here. So at the moment we've got it set to kind and let's say I want to find all of my adjustment layers. I just need to click this icon and you can see that immediately lists all of my different adjustment layers. We can also maybe choose effect and that shows me all of the layers where I've applied a layer style effect. And if you want to turn the filter off you just click this icon at the end here. So that's a nice innovation that I think will help speed up your workflow. Now let's take a look at colour range because I want to show you a cool new way to select skin tone. So let's go to select colour range and you can see in the select drop down here we now have the option to select skin tone. So let's adjust fuzziness and then hit OK. Once that's done let's just invert the selection and then add maybe a hue saturation adjustment layer and then you can see how quickly and easily I'm able to change the colors while preserving the tones in the skin. Now let's have a look at a few new features in Adobe Camera Raw. So here we have Adobe Camera Raw 7 and you'll notice immediately in my basics panel here that all of my sliders now sit centrally along the middle of each line. And I also have these new options for highlights, shadows and whites. And you can see the tones in my landscape here are quite flat, but we can use these sliders to really give the image extra punch. We can drag the highlight slider to the left there, and you can see how that's bringing in more detail in my sky. We can also drag the shadow slider to the right to lighten up some of the darker tones in the land. The white slider works in much the same way as the recovery slider used to in previous versions. And we can also maybe bring the blacks to the left just to darken down some of those darker tones. We can also give it a boost in contrast perhaps. And the clarity slider has seen some improvements too. We can now be much more aggressive with it. Once upon a time, if we were to drag that all the way to 100%, that would leave nasty halos around edge areas. But you can see now if we zoom in a little closer, we're not getting any of those halos. So let's just go back to full screen and maybe set clarity around 30 or 40 and you can see how very quickly we've given our image more punch if I just turn preview on or off. Next let's take a quick look at the adjustment brush and here you can see I have lots more options to selectively tweak the tones in my image. So let's say I want to cool down the foreground and the grass here. I can drag the temperature slider to the left there and then let's set a pin and just paint over the grass there and you can see how quick and easy that is to selectively adjust white balance. So that's a couple of changes to ACR that I think would be a great benefit to photographers. Now let's go back into Photoshop and see what else is new. Okay, now let's take a look at the all new Blur Gallery, which you can find in Filter Blur. And let's choose Iris Blur. And you can see how this gives me an interactive display over my image where anywhere outside the circle here is having the blur applied. And within the circle, we can change the feather by dragging these points here. And that means the blur is kind of gradually being applied from the outside to these points and anywhere within there is staying sharp. We can also change the strength of the blur using this interactive wheel here. And of course we can move our point around and even add a second iris over here. Now let's take a look at tilt shift. So let's turn off iris blur and go to tilt shift instead and you can see how this gives us a different interactive display where the center point here is going to be sharp and then we can create gradual blur in this area and this area so we can perhaps rotate this so it's applying vertically rather than horizontally like that 
so we can keep the center of our train sharp there and then now the fall off blur is occurring here and here and we can also adjust the blur strength over here and also the type of distortion and we can also change bokeh settings to give our blur different characteristics. The third new blur filter we have here is field blur and this is basically a way to apply blur across the frame but because we have this interactive wheel we can see how much blur we're applying as we go. So it's just a more intuitive way of applying blur. So that's three new blur filters and you can see that Adobe have really thought about the user experience here because we're able to make all of these adjustments on canvas and not take our eyes away from the image which really helps when you're trying to judge the strength of a setting. Now I'll just hit OK to apply that and I'm going to show you another great new feature which is background save. And to show you how this works, I'm just going to duplicate my layer a load of times just to beef up the size of my document. And then if I want to save it, I can go to File Save, obviously. And you can see how I get this percentage here. So that's saving, but I can continue to work on other documents while it's saving in the background. So I don't need to wait for the save to complete. Now let's take a look at a couple of new content aware features. So first of all, we just need to make a very rough selection of our cow here and I'm just going to do this with the lasso tool and then we can use a new feature called content aware move which you can find over here so I'm just going to click on my cow and drag it across to the other side over here and there you go you can see how we can move the cow from one place to another and having played with this new content aware move tool a fair amount I have to say it is quite temperamental it'll work fairly well when you have nice clean areas like our sky and our grass here but if there's too many colors or too much image detail the tool does fall down a little bit but bear in mind this is a beta version of CS6 that we're testing here so we'll have to wait for the finished product before we can pass judgment on this tool and I just want to show you another quick feature of the tool, which is the option here to extend rather than move. So let's make another quick selection of the tree trunk here with the lasso tool. And then if we grab the content to our move tool again, with it set to extend, I can drag that trunk down and you can see how we can extend the trunk like that. Moving on, we have another new feature in the patch tool for content aware patching. So let's just drag a rough selection around our stump here and then we can select a source say this clear bit of grass over here and get rid of our stump like that so this is kind of like content aware fill but with the added control of being able to sample an area of similar tone and detail so that's the all new content aware patch and content aware move tools now let's take a look at some changes to the crop tool so let's say i want to crop in tighter and tilt this image so we'll go to the crop tool and you see immediately we now have this bounding box that we can use to define our crop area like that and if we rotate the box you can see rather than previously when we would have rotated the crop area we're now actually rotating the image instead this takes some getting used to but I think it's a definite improvement we also have this option up here for delete cropped pixels and if we uncheck that and let's say I make this crop here and then I come back later and I think actually I, I really want to include the head I can simply drag outside so that's non-destructive cropping so rather than deleting pixels we're simply hiding them and there's a few other options up here in the options bar worth mentioning we have these different choices of overlay that adhere to different rules of composition like we have the golden spiral there and if you'd rather not use this new version of the crop tool, you can click in the options here and use classic mode instead. Now let's just undo that crop because I want to show you the liquify tool. And this really showcases the improved performance in CS6. So previously the liquify tool had a tendency to lag, but with the improved performance in CS6, you can see if I just use the forward warp tool, how we can very quickly liquefy our shape just like that and you can see I can be very quick about this and there's no lag at all so that's just one example of increased performance in CS6 now while we're in the liquefy command here incidentally I just want to show you a couple of what Adobe call JDI's which stands for just do it 
And these are small changes or tweaks that have been inspired by user suggestions, one of which is the brush size option here, which can now be set all the way up to 15,000 pixels. And also we have the option to use the left and right bracket keys to interactively resize our brush much more quickly. Now let's just hit cancel to get out of that. I'm just going to show you one final change. And I just need to access my actions palette. And here you can see in the drop down we have this option to allow tool recording. And I've checked that then I've created an action where I've just carried out a painting process using the pattern stamp tool. Now if we hit play on the action we can see each one of those strokes being applied which provides a great insight into the painting process. And that's another of the many new features available in Photoshop CS6 Beta. So I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I do hope you enjoy downloading the software and having a play for yourself. Thanks for watching.